Well, my name is Carla Berrens. I'm from the research group Turba Laboratory, and I am based at IN3. And today here, I'm going to, per to present the PERFORM project for you. Okay, one question. So who here remembers their science classes in, come on, secondary school? What do we remember? Okay, so I remember biology fondly. I remember the experiments. I did not like having to blow air inside a set of lungs. But it was okay. But I remember maths very specifically. I remember particularly one lesson in which the teacher, a very old man that now, with the, with the years I've come to understand a bit better, drew a sphere in the blackboard. And he drew his sphere and then cut a portion that was about a quarter of it. He was explaining an equation that helped us to calculate the inside volume of a sphere. So I am sitting there, first row, always first row, and he asks the class, okay, who here does not understand what I've drawn in the blackboard? Carla, I know you see nothing, don't worry, the rest. <laughs> and I'm there going, okay, because I actually cannot see things in perspective. When they are drawn, I will not understand the drawing. And that has been like this forever. Should the teacher have explained us the sphere in another way? Should he have hold a ball like this one? Should he have cut an orange in a quarter? I would have been able to understand that equation instead of shelving it in my brain on things I need for the exam. This is exactly what we're trying to do in the PERFORM project. We're trying to avoid any students being left out of any scientific topics, science, technology, engineering, and mathematics, it's STEM, and we're doing this through trying to engage them, motivate them, and debunk scientific stereotypes through using performing arts. This is an H2020 funded project, and it's a large consortium of 10 members, there you go, in three countries. In Spain, we have two universities and one NGO. In the UK, we have two universities and Science Made Simple, which is, they are like charities, NGOs and charities. In France, we have again charity, two charities. And we also have UNESCO and EUSEA. So what we're trying to do in PERFORM is through using the paradigm of responsible research and innovation, we're trying to bring forth the idea of humanizing science to engage secondary school pupils in these scientific topics. In Spain, we're using stand-up comedy, so they, the students are working on producing scientific monologues. In France, they are using clown, which means that they are doing sketches that are science-related. And in the UK, they are doing busking. Busking is what we do in the street. When you find a man with a guitar and he has a hat for you to throw money in, that's busking. And they're doing little busks that are science-related busks. So what they will do is they will demonstrate a, a little scientific experiment for people to watch and see and understand science in a different way. Okay, so, how are we doing this? Because it sounds very pretty and it sounds very engaging, but what are the ins and outs of the project? What we're doing in the project, the project has two main lines. A first line, it creates the protocols and it implements the protocols for this performing arts to enter the classroom. We are collaborating with schools in the three countries. It's five schools in total, two in Spain, two in France, one in the UK. So what we're doing is implement, designing and implementing these protocols, and we do this with the help of science facilitators. They are scientists, but they are also artists, they are performers, and early career researchers. Because one of the main aims of this project is to actually de demystify the stereotypes around science, we work with PhD students or very early postdoctoral students that come into the classroom, they explain their research, and they are with the students from beginning to end of the, pro of the process. This enables students to have a very close contact with early career researchers and make sure that they 
get away from the idea of the scientific with the white laboratory gown and like big um, barba. Thank you, big beard, crazy hair. At this point in time, we have implemented phase one. And that's when the second strand of the project starts. The second strand of the project is actually a constant evaluation and monitoring of the project. What we are trying to do is not only design these protocols, but also constantly evaluate the impact those are having, not only in terms of the students and the schools, but also how are the early career researchers feeling, how are the facilitators feeling, how are the students feeling? And what is the overall impact the project is having? We are evaluating this throughout. At this point in time, we have finished phase one. Phase one has consisted of work in five schools where they've all undertaken this participatory action. It's been a series of six participatory workshops in these five schools. And now we have gathered all the data and we are analyzing all the data to be able to redesign the protocols, taking into account the feedback the students have given us, the teachers, the ECR, so the early careers, and the own facilitators. Because one thing is how you plan and implement certain protocols in schools, and the other is the different reception that 14 and 15 year olds are giving you. And we've seen that from the initial idea to the actual implementation to the feedback we're having, it's a complete different story. So between phase one and phase two, we are now having this area of complete redesign and re-evaluation, and then next year, we are going to move into phase two with new protocols, not new, eh? improved with the feedback that they have, and see how they work. So what we're trying to do in PERFORM is PERFORM strives to engage the young people in STEM topics. We want to do this not only through catching their eye with a little bit more theatrical approach to science or more performative, but what we're trying to do, and, and that's one of the, for me, it's the most valuable thing, is we're trying to make them understand that everybody can pursue a STEM career and that it doesn't depend on your gender, or your age, or whatever. The only thing it depends on is how motivated you are, what's your level of engagement, and that you can see yourself in that work. Because my question to you, and I know I will not make eight minutes, but it was never my intention to reach eight minutes, is how would you have learned better about volumes in a blackboard drawing or through understanding what happens when you push a volume inside another. What would have happened? That's what we do with students. Thank you very much. Oh.